class, this is the next assignment. We'll be designing your own personal logo, and you will be doing an animal avatar. I think you all know what an avatar is. An avatar in, in gaming or in anything is, is a character that represents you, represents your personality, and it, it exists in its own reality. That's what um, an avatar is. So let's go through some of this. Okay, a short history. Animals right now are really popular for logos. You see them everywhere. They're very popular. They go in and out of style. Sometimes <clears throat> type, just letters are, are big for um, logos like IBM. Uh, other times, um, it's just abstract symbols. But right now, animals are back. Um, for whatever reason, there always seems to be about a 20, 30 year um, uh, recycling of different ideas. And we're definitely back with animals. Okay. So, <clears throat> animals in terms of mammals, fish, insects, and birds have been used to identify people and companies uh, and even countries since man first started using marks or logos. Uh, because you have to remember, before the 1800s, very few people could read and write. It was only the very wealthy people that uh, could read and write. Uh, if you ever seen any movies about England in the 1800s or somebody's in their little... I don't know, a window nook, reading a book. That would have been a rich person. Um, that wasn't commonly what uh, the, the average person. You had to have a reason to write. Women especially had to struggle to get this because it's like, well, you know, they're not going to be in business, so why do they need to, to read and write? Well, read and writing gives you information, and information gives you freedom. So it's very, very important to read and write. So what do you have then <clears throat> in a society that's pre-literate? You have marks, you have flag em emblems, and those things made you think either positively or negatively about whatever it was. It could be a family, uh, say like the Medici family in Italy, or it could be a country. Uh, it could be uh, Germany with the big square kind of iron uh, eagle, all right? But all of these early logos made you feel either of some feeling of strength or power or honor, okay? And here's a bunch of them. This is from the Game of Thrones. If anybody uh, has seen the series, it's now a couple of years old, maybe a few years old by now, and they did an incredible job with logos of animals, primarily animals. I th I'm not quite sure what this thing is. If it's a rose or something, I don't know what it is. But the the families really use some great looking logos. I mean, what a, what a wonderful thing to be a designer in this program. This is Family Crest. This was very big in the 1500s and the 1600s. You saw this all the time. It got really complicated, though. And they started to think more is more. I mean, look at this one. You got a sun. You got water symbols. You got the flag of uh, England, of Great Britain. And then what the heck? You, you have a ram here. It looks like a deer and a crown and like a lion with a crown on top of it. I mean, it just like goes on and on. Uh, but this is what was considered popular then. A lot of stuff. That's what they liked. Okay. Then we get uh, flags of uh, states and countries. In California, one is pretty much simplified. Uh, the one of Mexico here um, also harkens back to that more complicated one. And this tells a story. A lot of these actually tell stories. This is the legend of an eagle. Uh, I believe it's it, it's flew... Uh, it through the desert, caught a snake, and ate it on top of a prickly pear, and this became one of the uh, one of the elements of uh, Mexico, along with these colors. So you could see these colors with or without that. Okay. Here we go with uh, very popular uh, types of beer. The one on the right is uh, Japanese. The one on the left here, it's an old style, probably 1930s. 
uh, uh, Frankenmuth Bach beer. Okay, so this is an old Michigan beer, and this would have gone on to a bottle. Both of these would have been really nicely printed. You can see there was some gold ink on here, and this would go on bottles. Okay? So symbolism. And the reason I'm showing you this is because I want you to pick an avatar be that you have some feeling for, that you feel this is mine uh, because I feel like I'm a butterfly. I'm a tiger. I'm strong, but I, when I get scared, I roll up in a ball. I'm an armadillo. You know, um, I'm as pretty as a peacock. I'm, all of these things should kind of make you think about what your avatar should be. Okay? Flamingo. Exotic, lion, noble, fierce, falcon, fast and swift, panda. I have pando. Panda, friendly, docile. A dog is considered loyal, protective, also fierce. Hummingbird, very active, precise. Shark, aggressive, fast. Bear, large, aggressive, furry. Eagle, noble, majestic. Dragon, now the dragon has two symbols. In our culture, Western culture, it's a, sim a symbol of evil and destruction. You're going to get a uh, dragon coming through your village, and it is spitting fire. Now, the Asians take a totally different take on it. It means power, strength, and good luck. Good luck. So it's something different than what we would consider it in terms of a Western culture. Okay, so let's think about today's trends. You see a lot of animal logos uh, right now, and they basically are very stylized. When you take something and simplify it and simplify, simplify the lines, no longer has fur, uh, simplify this, simplify that, that's when you start developing that logo okay now there's basically two different ways you can go with logos well actually three because the uh, the third one would be a combination of one and two the first one is angles and the other one is round curvilinear curves okay these would be both both curvilinear all right these two would also be smooth curves. Look at this one, really nice. Looks like two foxes together, very nice. Also forming that kind of the yin and yang symbol, positive, negative, balance, male, female, that type of thing. Um, and look at this, isn't this great? You got a little bear inside the mama bear. I, I love this logo, it's beautiful. This is an orca uh, whale. And it is so stylized, it's almost not there. It's almost like you can't tell what it is. So that's kind of cool. Here we get a mixture of round shapes and angular. A lot of round stuff here. But overall, comes, comes through is pretty angular. You've got a lot of sharp points here. Okay, but also some round ones. It isn't just, uh, it isn't just uh, round. Okay, here's some more. Now I want to show you some angular ones. These are, well, there are some curves, but they are so stylized that the angular part pretty much dominates here. And this is what is really popular today, this type of thing, where you take an animal and make it into all these little facets. Look at each one. In each facet, they also have like a, a gradient in it. This is really complicated. Really complicated. I mean, it's really beautiful, too. Look at the choice of blue here. This fox is usually that reddish brown. You see it here. And then this blue. They chose blue for like shadows. It's it's really pretty. The dog. Okay, so um, I'm gonna demo this or at least start it. I'm gonna have in the um, the module for this assignment. 
you have everything here okay everything here so you'll be able to follow what I am doing here I just pick this as something possibly that this would ultimately be my company I wanted something um, aggressive that's where the horns mean and then I also wanted something that was also very stately looking it's very handsome it's very beautiful so I wanted that as a symbol of my company so I'm thinking ahead to my company okay I don't know all the details but this is going to be my avatar okay this is going to represent me and my company all right so assignment one your challenge will be to create an animal logo. It can be a geometric or curvilinear or something in between. It's your logo. Uh, it's for you personally or your design company. Pick an animal that represents you and start doing some sketches. And I'm going to show you one way to uh, work with it just with angles. And then I'm going to show you something else. Uh, I'll give you a link to this one guy who likes to work from photographs of animals. Uh, his stuff is really nice, too, and they're very abstract. Uh, so take a photo uh, of your sketch, bring it into Adobe Illustrator, lock it down, and start drawing. I'll do a demo of an animal using geometric styling. Okay. Uh, after you design your logo, you'll create a personal business card and stationery. You will place both in a digital mock-up for your portfolio. Okay? This week, your logo. This week, your animal avatar. Only. Next week, we will work on the business card. Okay? So, here we go. This is the logo I did up of a uh, deer, a stag, and this is what I'm going to use for mine. Now this is done obviously in uh, digitally. I did this in Illustrator and printed it out, or actually I just saved it, and I'm using it. Uh, you could do pencil sketches. There's absolutely wrong with pencils. Pencil sketches. If you want to do pencil sketches, then take a picture of it and then bring it into your um, email, and you can count, and then you can uh, drag it uh, into a folder for your to use. Okay. Now I'm also giving you this to show you the steps I'm doing for this. You don't have to do this, but I do like this technique, and you might like it too. So this is the uh, stag demo from start to finish. Now what I do is I start uh, an animal head on the bottom layer, make it 30% opacity, making it um, really light, lock it, and then I can draw over it. I'm going to use a anal analogous color palette. Now we're going to talk about color next class period, okay? On Thursday I'm going to talk about it and I'll tape the lecture so for this I'm going to do five or six colors or more and analogous colors mean colors that are similar so there's my guy I brought him in I lightened him and I'm going to trace over him these are my colors I made a little square so that I can select and then work on them so start tracing I'm going to start doing this I'm going to do the big areas that are in the background first. And then I'm going to create all the little detail on top of that. And there we are. So I'm going to see how close I can come to this. It won't be anything like this because I every time I do it, it looks a little bit different. But this is what you'll have to look at if you decide to do this. Okay? Now let's let's go to my Adobe Illustrator. Let's do new. I'm gonna change points. Do print. Print is fine. 
and then go to inches. Okay, I, don't worry about this stuff. CMYK color is exactly right. 300 PPI is exactly right. Um, have it go up and down, portrait. There it is. Okay, now this is called stag.jpg. I'm going to bring it in here. I'm in Illustrator. File, place, shift command P, and it's going to ask me, what do you want? Look for it. Well, let's see, what did I call it again? Anybody remember stag one? I think that's it. No, you said it was stag um, JPG. It wasn't stag one. It wasn't. Let's see if this will no. work though. I might no. see. I I I've downloaded a couple of them are on my. Oh. Okay. Yeah, but thank you. Uh, this will work. Okay. So I want it bigger though. Whatever you do, whether it's a sketch or whatever, do it big. There we go. Do it big, especially with this some the horns are themselves to uh, take up so much room. Okay, so here we go. And then over here, I have opacity on the right. I'm going to do the. I'm going to do about fifty percent. That's the middle. Even a little bit more. There's thirty-three. Okay. Then I'm going to go to object, lock, selection, and there we go. Now, if I click on it. It's not going to go anywhere, and nothing's going to happen, okay? So here we go. I am going to do some colors. And where is my uh, that's gradient? I don't want the, I don't see my, go to window, swatches, and this is what I want. Great. Uh, and I'm going to do analogous colors, so those will be colors that are similar. Okay, so here we go. Um, let's do a box. Get rid of this. We don't need this. Where's a box? Okay, rectangle tool. Let's start with a very light brown, and I'm going to make that right there. That's going to be the first one. And I'm going to do one, two... I am just holding down the option Alt key. I think I'll do six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So here we go. The next next lighter would be here. I mean next darker. What you doing, buddy? I, my dog is in here. Here's another one. Getting darker. Darker, darker, real dark. Okay, good. These are all the colors. These are the only colors I'm going to use. I might cheat. I might do a different color for the eyes. Okay, let's start. I am going to do the background first. Okay, so right now let's do this as an antler color. Okay, here's the pen tool. Okay, there are no curves in here. Okay, no curves. So it just click, 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 click. Okay, this is it's decided. That's chosen. So this is what I'm going to be coloring in. One, two. I should. Well, I don't know. Why I'm counting. I don't need to count. Kind of guessing here. I kind of go have gone over it. Okay, that's pretty good. Let's fix this up. This area, right? This needs to be a little bit wider. There. That's not too bad. Okay. Uh, rather than drawing this one, click. Uh, you can't see this. I'm recording this. I should record this up here. I'm in the menu, object, 
transform, reflect, that means flop. And make sure you click copy because you want a copy of it too. And there it is, exact copy. There we are. Okay. Now I'm going to do the, the, the face. Actually, I want to do a neck on him. So, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose this color. Okay. So, but I want to do a neck. Click. 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 That's his neck. Okay. Don't worry about it. I'll, I'll uh, do the face over it and then have it go in the back. Okay. Now I'm going to do the face. The face will be this color. Click. 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 And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to flop it. Object, transform, reflect, copy. Oops, what happened? Object, arrange, sorry, transform, reflect. There it is. So you got I got vertical, 90, and I do a preview so I can see, and then copy because you want this extra one. Okay. Now I'm going to click on Shift. Do I have both of them? Yep. And I am going to do go up to Pathfinder. And I'm going to Unite. There we are. Now they're one. I see a little bit here I didn't get. That's okay. I'm not going to worry about that right now. I'll probably cover it up. I'm going to click on these two again, and I want them to come forward. Object, arrange, bring the front. Okay. I'm going to put this underneath him, and that automatically goes to back. Okay. It might be a little bit too strong, so what I'm going to do is click on it, I'm going to go to uh, Gradient. Excuse me just a second. And I'm going to do a Gradient. Let's click on this. Remember the black and white is always a default. Let's go over here. I don't want radio. I do want this one. Okay. But here, I want this color. Okay. How come it didn't go there? Come on. There it is. Sometimes the, the black will stay there, so just pull it out. That's how you get rid of colors. Just grab them and pull them out. Okay, so let's click on this again. Ah, I was some, on something else. I think I was on this. Uh, okay, I don't want that. Let's go Command Z, Command Z, Command Z. There we go. Okay, click on this. Move that there. Come on. I am having a hard time with this. Come on. Oh, you know what I'm, what I'm doing wrong? It's, it's, it's not that. It's actually it's the swatch that I want. I'm getting confused with this. You click on this and then drop it in here. There we go. And then get rid of the black. My bad. Okay. And then here I want the same one. So, let's see, where is this color again? It's right here. There we go. 
and I want to make one, another one, so just click there, and I'm going to put that there. You know, for some reason, it keeps messing up, and I'm not quite sure why it's doing that. I'm going to put this here, and then I'm going to put the light brown in there. And then over here, I'm just going to click, and then I'm going to put the dark brown in there. There we go. That's what I wanted. That was difficult to do. I just wonder if it's my mouse. If it's my mouse, there's, there's something wrong with my mouse. Okay, so then we have this. It's a little bit too close to that, so I think it either needs to be lighter or darker. Let's let's try darker. Um, just a little darker. That's not bad. Let's see if I can fix that in Pathfinder. There. There, I fixed it. There was that other space there, so I fixed that. Okay, so we have this, and that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna, f I can fix this a little bit later on. I'm gonna worry about it right now. Actually, what I could do is just make a nose right now for it. Um, let's see. Let's choose this color. Let's let's choose a square, and let's just make a nose. This is all angular, so. I'm not sure if I like that. We'll, we'll, we'll figure it out later on if I'm gonna keep it or not. All right. Uh, okay. Now, for me to see behind, to see the, uh, the lines, it's difficult to do now. So what I'm gonna do is make this lighter. So I'm, I'm gonna temporarily make it like 30 okay and the same thing with this otherwise I can't see what I'm doing okay so you can do that then I can see the nose is really far off here and I'm going to use this and I'm going to do one two three move in and then one two three on the other side okay that looks good all right, um, let's put some things here for his forehead. Um, let's see, let's try this. Gradient, where are our, our swatches again? Let's bring the swatches down. Uh, okay, so there's that. Let's over all of them. Now you have a choice right now. You could make another layer to put on more of the fine tuning on this, or you could lock it and just draw over it. I'm gonna lock it for now. If this got really complicated, I would definitely do something different. Okay, so let's see, like with the head now, uh, let's use this tool and let's, loop. Gonna select the color first. That would be this one. So that's this one here. And let's do the forehead. Okay, and let's flip it. Object, transform, reflect, and again, copy. You want to. Looks good. Um, let's see. Let, what, what else should we do? How about the eyes? Let's do the eyes. Let's do the eyes blue. Real dark blue. Okay. Pen tool.
So it's kind of cool. And let's again flip these. Object, arrange, transform, reflect. Make sure you do copy. Okay, that looks pretty good. Um, I'm going to do unlock all. And I am going to restore these colors to where they were. Now let's do this 100. And let's do this one. It's over here. This one should be 100 also. Okay. Now I can keep working. I can keep working. This needs to be fixed here. The nose could move over a little. Okay. I need to fix this. I need to put some more detail in it. Okay. I could fix some areas here too. It's uh, This actually I kind of like, so I, I might just actually make this a little bit more. Um, more space so it looks more intentional like that yeah I kind of like that more yeah uh, so anyway this is how you just keep working on this and you can do this with any animal you want uh, to simplify it okay now I'll show you Don't save. I'll show you what this one actually came out with. This one um, that I actually made this step-by-step -step thing with. It actually came out looking like this. So there's that. I also did a blue version. Um, and I like that actually better. And that's one I use for my business card. So you'll see that. You don't have to use... Because it's a deer or a rabbit or a cat, you don't have to use brown. You don't have to. You could do a blue cat if you wanted to. Just, yeah, you could do really anything you wanted. Now, there is a, a this uh, particular uh, demo, if you can go to YouTube and put in iconic logo Fox, and you can see what this guy is doing. And I'll give you the uh, so URL for this. Search for Fox images. Let me take the, the voice off, and I just want to show you what he does there. I mean, he actually looks at animals, and he's doing a lot of what I'm doing in terms of locking and that, but he's drawing over them. I mean, this is really stylized. See that? But aren't these cool, what he comes up with? When he's drawing it, you kind of think, oh, I don't think it's going to come off very well. But it is. It looks very cool. And I'm going to keep skipping here. There's he's actually tracing it. It's very cool. There's his uh, working on his logo. Now, for this project, then that would be his personal avatar, the fox. And what attributes does the fox have? What are the things that, if you were a business or a person, what would, how would this fox, what would it say about you and your company? Huh? I mean, there, there are plus things and minus things. I mean, because fox are known for stealing stuff eating chickens, fox in the chicken uh, coop, that kind of thing. And they're also really pretty. Uh, some people, I think, even have them for pets, like dogs. But this is also really a good uh, a demo. And this would be on curving, very curvy. So you have mine on uh, angular, and then this something like this is very curvy. So you have both examples. And let's see, let's get, that is about all I wanted to show for that. So I'm going to do um, just the export now.
Adiós.